Hello, welcome to the classics. Christmas may be over, but I want to do one final video on holiday related films. On my Christmas Carol review, I mentioned that many families with di uh, watch different movies around the holidays. For example, someone left a comment saying that their family watches It's a Wonderful Life. But one film that has a tradition of being shown in many markets again and again is Laurel and Hardy's version of Babes in Toyland, or March of the Wooden Soldiers as it's now known. As a matter of fact, it actually aired here in my market on Christmas Day. So for my final classics video for this year, I am going to do a comparison video of two well-known versions of Babes in Toyland. The Laurel and Hardy version from 1934 and the Disney version from 1961. Now, Babes in Toyland was originally an operetta from 1903, and although I've never seen it performed live, I did read a summary about what it was about. Well, actually, I, I read two summaries, because when it was revived in the 70s, the, the story was changed a bit. Uh, both versions aren't really straight adaptations of the play, but they do take bits and pieces from it, and some they take some of the songs for the cast to sing, as well as, you know, for background music. Alright, so the Laurel and Hardy uh, film, I got to see the complete cut of the film with the original Babes in Toyland title, because a lot of DVD companies release um, a shorter version of 73 minutes that cut things out, so keep an eye out on that. Now, uh, where to begin? Well, the animal costumes, including the three little pigs, as well as the cat and the fiddle, kind of look a little bit bizarre, but... I think the sets and the characters I found to be charming and very lavish looking. Laurel and Hardy play Ollie D and Stanley Dumb, who are hoarding with the woman who lives in a shoe. And Laurel and Hardy, I think, were got, I mean, face it, they were one of the most popular comedy teams of the last century, and they're still loved by many people today. They, in this film, they got some good, funny moments, and they add a nice touch to the film, but I felt Laurel and Hardy were much better in their own shorts and features than the operators that they're producer Hal Roach was putting them in at this time, like The Devil's Brother or The Bohemian Girl. I think it was because, you know, the, I think the problem is they're put within a specific storyline and they are not always given a chance to do what they are, what you know, what they do best. And I think sometimes, you know, it limits them. The villain Barnaby, played by Henry Brandon, is a nice, hammy, sneaky character, and the cast, for the most part, was good. But the only acting I really wasn't that crazy about was Tom Tom, played by Felix Knight, who was an excellent opera singer, but I felt like he acted like he lacked charisma when he was acting. The film features a battle at the end that I found to be the most exciting part. While I do recommend watching Laurel and Hardy's version, I actually kind of recommend uh, checking out their shorts like Hog Wild or Busy Bodies or their starring features like Way Out West for first time viewers. This ver their version of Babes in Toyland or March of the Wooden Soldiers is definitely worth a look. Uh, the film is in the public domain so watch out for those bad prints. Okay, next up is Disney's 1961 version which seems to split viewers people who think it's a sugary mess to a fun, heartwarming movie. The film definitely has a very colorful look, and you can tell Disney was able to take advantage of a big budget and the technology, something Hal Roach didn't have when he made his Laurel and Hardy version because color was expensive, and being a small studio in the Great Depression often put some strains on his films. Disney's version opens nicely, and the dance numbers were impressive to watch. But the plot does seem a little slim, and the characters do seem to be a little bit too happy at times. And I think people today might be frustrated that there's a musical number like every five minutes. Um, and I, th I think probably because the, they're, it's showing its musical theater roots. I mean, if you watch a revival of stage musicals from the 30s and 40s, they did the same thing. You know, they added a lot of uh, musical numbers. My favorite part of the film was the villain, Barnaby, here played by Ray Bolger. The same Ray Bolger who played the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. He plays that hammy way like his predecessor from 1934, and Ray gets to do some nice dance numbers that shows why he was a popular dancer and comedian on stage in vaudeville and in other films like Wizard of Oz, The Great Zigmild, and The Harvey Girls. He seems to be having fun here. Personally, I thought the second half in Toyland was much better than the first half in Nursery Rhyme Land because Ed Wynn, who was a very popular radio comedian, is cast as the toy maker, and Tommy Kirk from Old Yeller is his assistant, and they made a nice, funny team. This was Disney's first all-live-action musical, and it bombed when it first came out, but I do think Disney learned how to make musicals work with his next project, Mary Poppins. 
Oh, one more thing. Barnaby's sidekicks look and act like Laurel and Hardy, and that might outrage some of their fans, but if you watch the 1934 version, it features a mouse that looks suspiciously like Mickey Mouse, so I think Disney probably did it as a way to get back. Okay, Disney's film I did enjoy. I can see why people may not uh, get into it. It's a bit long, the it's a bit sweet, and there's not a strong plot, but I really liked it. Okay, that's it for the classics, so feel free to leave any comments about the video or if you have seen either version of Babes in Toyland, and go ahead and tell me your thoughts. And see you next time on the classics.